evening, everyone. Um, thanks for coming out to the last part of our Haitian Revolution this evening. And I hope you will enjoy and gather everything that Joseph has shared with us thus far and take it to the next level. And um, thanks for coming out again. And I'm going to turn it over to Joseph. Joseph. Thank you. <laughs> So we're going to answer the question, was the revolution a successful one? This photo painting recreates the famous historical scene of the formal beginning of the Haitian Revolution. In August 1791, when a sizable group of diverse blacks, from mulattoes to the relatively newly arrived African slave to young and older women, they all met in the forest in the evening to plan an all-out war against the French whites, their property, and their lives. Bwakaima ceremony, a voodoo one, hybrid in its adaptable form, in the new world, a mixture of a Christianity and African spiritual religion. Actually, if we talk about Christianity in Haiti, we have to also talk about Muslim in Haiti too. Since many Africans, a slave that were taken from the West Coast, I'm sorry, I think I changed it by mistake, that's fine, from the West Coast of that uh, continent, like uh, uh, Ghana or Senegal, uh, Gambia areas, and certain parts of Central Africa, like the Congo, or the east, eastern part, like the uh, Sudan, where all Islam faith at the time. The photo picture struck me as inclusive as a founding country image. It appeared very modern. Haiti was at its most progressive uh, fighting and revolution, but still trying to maintain their humanity. Terror and violence, physical cruelty and emotional fear led to a lot of things in the heart and mind and soul of both a slave and a slave master. However, at this particular time, the slaves were, were preoccupied with two things. And those two things will help us to start the discussions on whether the revolution was successful or was it not successful. The revolution wanted to uh, deliver a fatal blow to two fate-driven forces. That was controlling the African Haitian slaves but succeeded with only one factor, a real big one, but singular ending slavery. Ending slavery for the bulk of the, sla of the slaves mean freedom, even though they knew they would still be poor, but their feelings were they would rather be poor, be that but be their own poor, independent, and given a chance to make a way to ascend that there is a heavy, independent, um, a strict dem demanded for the individual in Haitian culture and sensitivity and not just community or neighborhood or town or province. Freedom mean an author of one's own movement. And thinking and the author of one's own thinking, an author 
and accountable for one's own choice and action. Bwakaima <clears throat> started a psychological and emotional liberations of African Haitian slaves through a spiritual, religious set of lands mixed with the stark, brutal reality of the slave op oppression. It was exhilarating feelings to fight for one's freedom and to pledge loyalty to a growing community shaping an awareness and consciousness of a nation and a people. What the slave and the people of color did in the Haitian Revolution was something that was unthinkable, especially at that time in the 18th century. The slaves and black and the co connections were solidified by then provided by the ideology of white supremacy. The ideology that had uh, assured the white world that didn't have the int intelligence, the organizational skills and courage. The black could not have any of those to pull off a successful revolt. No way the white supremacy would have think that. Therefore, the Haitian Revolution destroyed those stereotypes and myths about black people. Looking at that fact alone and ending slavery, equality, uh, it qualified the revolution as a successful one from that perspective. To be poor and own your own body to be poor and own your own mind, and was more appealing than, than being a slave and being, brutal, uh, being brutally treated. The revolution ended uh, physical slavery in Haiti and established those black slaves as citizens of a nation and dependent nations, the first successful slave revolt in history, and still the only slave revol rev revolutions that successful. At, at still the only successful slave revolutions, ending a slavery was great, though many times former Haitian slaves ended back on the same kind of plantations they, they worked out on as a slave before. And the operative words here, as we mentioned, is slaves. They were poor, but they were relatively free and human beings and citizen as well. Looking at this photo of painting, we cannot un uh, underestimate the power of the psychological liberations that happen to the African Haitian slaves and people of color all over uh, the world inspired by the Haitian Revolution. At, at that time, remember, as you look more instantly at the photo painting, black was a dispassed and degraded color, and white supremacy, racism ruled the world exclusively. White supremacy had said black African were natural slaves because they were naturally inferior. Bwakaima started a revolution with a community of slaves that put a power hit on that Haitian revolution. They con confronted, manipulated, 
deceived, fought hard three major powers at that time. The French, the British, Spain. Each of these countries had invaded the island to claim part of it. But Toussaint, Dessalines, and other, others with significant help from, from Mother Nature defeated France, Britain, and Spain, and they all withdrew from the islands, and Haiti became original again and independent. The Haitian Revolution was successful because it had two major goals. First, end slavery, and declared a black nation, and they did so. Their success succeeded on those two powerful factors and principles, but there was a third goal, a third principle, democracy. Haiti had yet to realize that third goal of the Haitian revolutions, and that is a major challenge because the revolutions happened because the lowest group, the most impossible group, the group with least resources, rose up and fought revolutions and won a nation and self-respect and pride and right for black humanity. How do I go back? Hopefully, yeah. All right. So a second picture is the present day Haiti. Unfortunately, I pass it. And we, where we can see the city of Haiti. When we look at the continuous poverty or extreme uneven poverty in a crowded Haiti, even though the elite has the special places of airy, wider spaces. We see another dream of the Haitian revolution that failed. Dream restored economic growth and self-sufficiency, -suffic but two big factors stop it. The retali reta retaliatory act is is par ahead by Thomas Jefferson and enacted by Jefferson administration to aid the French, the French white and to not recognize Haiti independence and start an, an embargo and the other major power followed. The other big factor was uncompromising violent destructions of the infrastructures of the islands, best institutions and places, and economic and, and productions, infrastructures. Those two factors, embargo and the revolution's violence against the statu quo, a slave violence mirrored the slave master's violence and fear against the slave. Revenge played a motive role in the success of the, de of the defeat. French soldiers and general uh, diaries talk about the fearlessly that the Haitian troop threw themselves into death on even unnerved the, the French soldiers. Now this could just be another stereotype of black, not uh, cherishing enough li life. But I think beyond that concern, in reality, in its reality is about the existence, existential awareness of the slave 
used to have this uh, slave revolt that became a successful revolution in Haiti. So we are looking at a continuous difficult challenge of creating a healthy, productive city of too many people coming from the country looking for job or some form of relief to survive. One more thing, when we look at a present day Haiti and follow this theme of colonial exploitations, we would have to connect with the inter internal ruling classes that exist in, the, in Haiti where they are individually um, empowering themselves, even at the expense of their country, of the country. We do have new generous investment in Haiti, manufacturing, originality, we need more. And a systematic, powerful, non-political, clean-up, cooperative campaign to have accountability for all of the money coming and in and that will be coming in to the banks and the businesses. Haiti needs to develop a digital and a sport culture. In the North, there are signs of development and building of computers, institute, institute and digital industries. However, a sport culture is at an infancy level is still now. Economic development, though crucial to the renewed Haiti, will still be stagnant as long as the elite refuses to reach back and train a significant number of the poor students and help them use their experiences with educational uh, wig, wig to, or advance the, to advance themselves while improving society. Countryside of Haiti. The countryside has always had it rough in Haiti. Remember, the French had a labor policy of reaping as much as profit as they could, which is why it became the richest colony. The countryside was not allowed to evolve, but the land spaces had to adapt and uh, to do it with quickly since the idea is to use and to explore all land to make uh, the crops that become uh, commodities. The Haitian Revolution and the slavery period before the revolutions both devoted and soft and ambivalent attitude toward nature and the land. The slave loved and hated the land because it gave the slave uh, substan substance and a sense of beauty and pleasure. But at the same time, the land made the slave work to death to, to extract profit for the masters, which they had nothing to gain themselves at the time. The slaves had hope that the revolutionary uh, government would allow to have a pick of land to cultivate and sell some of the produce and commodity. However, that was another a promise that came through 
in a limited way with Henry Christophe's government in, in the southern part of Haiti. The slaves were transferred into peasants and farmers and were given or sold piece of property to formally change the status of the slaves. The main reason why this project of the land redistribution didn't happen because the Haitian government didn't have the fund to, mo to modernize agriculture and further they didn't have enough trade partners because of the embargo and the slaves who became a peasant who later had to become city person looking for job and better living conditions. The Haitian Revolution promised the slave freedom and not necessarily a better life, even though that was a part of the assumptions that the life would be better and free. But the bad decisions and the uh, fateful decision pay the French co compensation crippled the economy and civic develop development of Haiti. It was an, uh, an arrested growth from the beginning because the major power had the boycott power and they use it. African, I'm sorry, wealthy and the poor. The explicit and progressive believe in the little men and women that they could participate in government was not fulfilled. And so democracy took a back seat to dictatorship and single rulership in Haiti. Like most revolutions, the early years were years of promised and compensation, but the structures that were set up could have expanded the opportunity of, or protect or solid, solidify the status quo of fullness. The tensions and the struggles of the mulattoes and the blacks was connected to the social class questions. The poverty rate has always been severe, and at present, it is near the early percent mark of, of, of officially living below the international and national standards of living. The literacy rate is likely above 60 percent, which makes it the lowest weight compared to other countries in the Americas. <coughs> the elite in Haiti never had the, ma the masses as a priority. They never quite knew what to do with them if they could not be exploited. There was through educations and create creative collaborations in order to improve Haiti. Individual greed has been the dominating quality and trend. Haiti has changed many hands of the government because of military coup, coups. Since the military is controlled by both the small elite and the external powers that, that own them. The longest leader 
in Haitian history was a Papa Doc. He ruled for over 36 years. And he brought him uh, the, the black and, and the brown middle class, and they exhibited, for the most part, the same attitude toward the poor and working poor that they, the mulat, that the mulatto middle class felt above them. On lack in a country like the United States, there is not a forging of alliances to reality make a difference for the poor. The poor is to be uh, pitied for a moment and to be feared and suspicious and to be distant from them. Welfare programs or programs to improve on significant scale have been knocked down or activated in very limited way. Education would be a great way to start giving poor people greater opportunities and the elite has limited that as well. And even though public school is free, many children cannot even afford to go because of the personal and household finances and situation in Haiti. The Haitian Revolution ended up serving the interests of the ambitious, ambitious slave and the free people of color. And even though there was discussions about what to do to make the slave a viable labor worker, a worker, the revolution did not get a chance to develop or enact any meaningful reforms for the slaves that are here to the Haitian revolutions. The internal community and Haiti. This term has to be and divided into two sections. A section that deal with the powerful positive influence that the Haitian Revolution had in the international community. And then the second section that deals with the negative forces that came out in the interna international community. We have already talked about the great power of, and of the major powers at that time. Economically boycotting Haiti, refuse to trade with it for the most part and all reducing the tax and the, and the commodity price solo. The situation is non-competitive and not in the south and the west of the islands. The very first international connections after the revolutions was the return of the French. As I mentioned in my lecture, Struz, the French sent a, me a message to the newly independent Haiti government that if they, the ex-slaves nation, didn't pay them compensation for the destructions of property and infrastructure, and a slave that it costs the slave master and trade merch uh, merchants and ship owners less 
less than two decades of Haitian independence, 1825, the French sent 12 warships with 338 ca cannons pointed toward Haiti. They were waiting there because if Haitian government did not agree to pay 150 million francs in compensation to the French, they would be invaded again and back to slavery. The, the historians have estimated that the Haitian government since 1825 has paid the French government over $10 million American money. The French reduced it from 150 million to 90 million franc. The revolution did solve that program, uh, that program but that was not the, the functions of the revolution, revolutionary generation to solve that challenge, but the post, -genu the, but the post -genera generations, and they didn't accomplish that. Um, that. The unfinished business of the Haitian revolutions. So in conclusion, let me give you the six major reasons why I think the Haitian revolution was a successful one. First major assault on white supremacy, and successful attack against slavery. It's inspired, it's inspired Latin, to the Latin to develop movements like the Harlem's Renaissance in the US and the Negritude movement in Africa and the Caribbean's programs. It's inspired all of the anti-colonial movements of people of color in the modern world. Have held into the notions of universal freedom, even though it was isolated more and cut off economically than any other revolutions in the 18th century in night or 19th centuries yet it fought for freedom for the lowest group to be free and to be citizens and Haitians I still pride even though they're so poor but they so pride they don't care if we are poor even though we cannot do what we do we cannot send our children to the white school we cannot travel when we can we don't have everything, but we are citizens of a nation. Haiti was the first and only nation until the 20th century revolutions in, third, in the third world countries that promoted and created a plan to deal with the lowest rung of the ladder, slave, and peasants poor with a land property, a scheme for them and other self buildings. So I give you the last time some, I give you, you know, from, for the last time, so I bring you some outlines for the first two and um, I know so for tonight, so maybe we can try to look at them together so just to remember what we went over. <laughs> Is that okay, or you think? Yeah. All right. <laughs> you know, the very first one, it's like, you know, remember that Haiti, IT was the name 
that's coming from the island when the Columbus invaded Haiti. The Indian called it Haiti, which means the land of the mountains. And the Spain, the Spanish called it Hispaniola. The French called it Saint Domingue. And now it's Haiti by the Haitians. In, uh, in, 19, in 1492, on the islands, the native populations was the Tainos and Arawak, Native Americans, and Christopher Columbus sailing from Spain to try to find new routes to China and India, came into contact with the Tainos people in 1492. As we still know, we call it the West Indies. Columbus named both sides of the island, French and, and Spanish, Hispaniola, even though the native people called it Haiti, as we just said, which mean again, the land of mountain, the mountainous place. And the French had not come to eventually the side of the island, it would rule the west, western side. In 1517, warfare Europeans, diseases such as smallpox, measles, influenza destroyed the Tainos people, close to 250,000 to 350,000 Tainos in 1492. Can you remember that? It's a big number, right? So we tend like in 1697, a Spaniard start, um, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, in 14, that was in 1492. So, but to less than 15,000 in 15, 1517. So that was not too long later, right? completely destroyed. In f the 1500s uh, to 1697, Spaniards started to settle the eastern part and introduced sugar production in 1516. Uh, the French took another century to start settle settlement in the 1600 after fighting for a few decades, the French, in a peace treaty in 1697, took over the western part of the island and named it Saint Domingue, which is still today, they call it Saint Domingue, which is in English we call it Saint Domingo. In summary, late 1600 to 1700 started the rise of Saint, uh, of, uh, Saint Domingue as a French richest colony. Saint Domingue is uh, specialized in several commodities, but the two greatest that made the island the top colony was sugar and coffee. Majority of the best and biggest plantations were in the north part of Saint Domingue. By the time of the revolution, 1791, over 100 plantations existed in the north for sugar and coffee and other commodities such as indigo um, and other stuff. In the 1600 to 1700s, nearly one million African slaves were brought to Saint-Domingue to make it the richest colony 40% of sugar produce and 60% of coffee produce for Europe came from that little island, Saint Domingue. In summary, 16, six, uh, in 1660 60 to 1700, as we mentioned, identifying Saint Domingue as the richest colony. It was also noted as the most violent colony in terms of punishment and the nature of 
punishment, which was the border and uncompromising. It may be important to note that the first record recorded slave revolt in the Caribbean was in Haiti in 1522. In 1522. The French labor method was to dismiss, trying to mate a slave to have many children for labor. They simply invested in the slave trade and had a slave trade just bring a slave from Africa, work hard for about seven years, and that would have been enough for them. Because the life expectancy, don't forget that was um, three to seven years. The four groups that existed in Saint-Domingue and had their own self interest going, going, except it was in the end the mulatto or free people or color, color, uh, and the slaves forged a unity against the grand blanc, which is the, the big white men, and the petit blanc, and the French government, and the military that produced the Haitian Revolution. Grand blanc is slave owners, 4,000 to 5,000. Petit blanc, the artisan class, profession, professionals, uh, regular white, 3,500. For 35,000. Free people of color, uh, this group consisted of both free Africans and black Creoles, mulattoes, who one parent was French or white, nearly 30,000 or so. Slave, the, maj the majority, nearly 500,000. They made the world go round for the witch, and particular, the witch French. Let's look at the number two, the, um, the outline of number two, which we talked about last week. In 1791 to 1804, the Haitian Revolution started in August 1791. The, the only country where a slave freedom was taken by force and marks the only successful slave revolt in modern times. Second public republic only in the, Uni uh, only in the United States in the New World. In 1789, there was a major drop, drop, uh, drought in Haiti and food shortage. In this kind of situation, the last priority for food distribution is the slave. And as a result, there was a large population of slaves that was not well fed and mistreated. In 1765 to 1781, American revolutions in uh, 1789 to 1799, French Revolution. Both revolutions inspired the Haitian slave revolutionaries to fight and declared independence for themselves. In sum summary, 1791, Officially, the revolution started in the north, in Boacaima, near the, the woods of the witch and the urban city. La, uh, La Cap kept Haitians under the watch of a voodoo priest, Judy Bookman, a religious and was meeting numerous slaves, eventually up to 100,000 started burn down the witch and big plantations 
in the area and kill the French planters and their families and supporters. For months, then inspired by the Northern slaves, a slave and free people of color elsewhere in the island joined them and burned and killed um, and destroyed the infrastructures. 1792, France sent troops to destroy the, the rebellion. The French troops were not able to su subdue the revolutions. By 1801, the great, the great Haitian leader, Toussaint Louverture, under their leadership and with other generals and soldiers, organized armies of former slaves and free people of color, and eventually had controlled and had conquered a large part of the island. In 1801, Toussaint, his armies and allies not only had fought against the French, but also the revolution took on an international dimension as, a great, as great Britain and Spain got involved for self-interest reasons and eventually uh, lost to the Haitian slave revolutionaries. 1801 is still on the other side of the page. Toussaint declared he was the sole leader of Haiti. He declared independence and a constitution was written but was captured by the French troops and shipped to France where he died. In 1802, for a short period, Napoleon nearly 10,000 troops regained control of Saint-Domingue, but the Salim, Toussaint's white hand men and his armies, and this, and this is, uh, defeated them and sent them home to France. In 1804, January 1st, the renamed the island Saint-Domingue, Haiti, Haiti, the original name, and declared Haiti a free nation or a free republic. So tonight we talk about, on the outline, three, fear, There is probably no revolutions that suffered equal, equally or more than the Haitian revolutions. The revolution was not able to do, rebuilt financially because both countries, the US and France, were, were allowed to establish normal economic and Diploma, diplomatic uh, relations with the West of the world. In 1804 to 1850, 1859 and 1862, however, no sooner had Haiti declared its independence in 1804, the, the whole world turned against Haiti. And the retaliatory strategy was done in the most crucial and significant way, economic embargo led by Thomas Jefferson and the United States, all diplomatic and trade relations with other major countries were cut off. National ref uh, uh, nations refused to, reg to recognize Haiti's independence, and that crippled the small island con country deeply. 
The U.S. didn't recognize Haiti as a nation not until 1862, and Britain not until 1859, Spain and Portugal not until the 20th century. In 1808 to 1826, after the Haitian revolutions, other Latin Americans and Mexico were inspired to try to do the two things that the Haitian Revolution did. Uh, so, yeah. National independence and slavery. However, countries were inspired to do what Haiti had done, confront the, the colonial, colonial master and defeat him. Do, um, be, between 1808, only four years after the Haitian Revolution, Latin Americans start to rise up, and by 1826, most of the Latin American countries had overthrown their colonial masters. It would take some time before many of these nations ended slavery, but the, the process of liberation had begun, inspired by the Haitian Revolution. In summary, 1800 to 1811, 1822, 1831, Frederick Douglass, the great abolitionist, remarked that every black man, women, and children in the world owes Haiti a debt because they were the first to confront their oppressions by, uh, by the slave's master and overcame it. The revolutions gave black slaves all over the America, Americas hope. And this was not just Latin America, America but the US in, in the America, American South, where a slave very was still prospering and pro profiting uh, capitalist, a slave master. You had such a, sl such a slave revolt like Gabriel and Posse rebellions, a slave revolt near New Orleans in 1811, which terrified the slave holders that Denmark's Versailles in South Carolina in 1822, and finally, Nat Turner in 1831. Many others, all of them, gave appreciations and recognition to the Haitian Revolution. Finally, in 1825, France demanded compensation for the loss of property. A slave considered the property to money and trade. If not, they were threatening to invade Haiti again and sent 12 warships to, the ha to Haiti waiting for ha Haiti's responses. That small islands agreed and extensively suffered for uh, trying to pay that debt. France demanded 150 million gold, uh, gold franc. Haiti had given France millions, and Haiti was only able to start com complying after it agreed to borrow much of the money from, fr from fr France bank at a very high interest rate again. This kind of debt was, of course, self-fulfilling prophecy because it made the island economically dependent on France for decades and unable to build its nations up like the Amer Americans. And French built their nations up after their revolutions. Thank you very much.